All right, guys, here's the question. Why do you not want to give too much oxygen to your COPD patients? And the answer is very simple, okay? So I'm going to try to break this down for you so that you understand this. This is a question I received on my YouTube channel and from a previous video. And it's a great question. Not everybody grasps this stuff. And these questions are sometimes difficult to understand. So we know that one of the four hazards of oxygen is the depression of ventilation in your chronic retainer patient. Okay, when we say chronic retainer, a lot of people say, oh, that's COPD. But that's not just COPD. That's your morbidly obese patient. That's anybody who lives with a high CO2 and a compensated bicarb. Basically, what happens is, is your central chemoreceptors that operate off of CO2 levels, they basically go to sleep. They say, okay, you've been ignoring me all this time. Your CO2 level is already high. The body's compensated. So we're not, we're not breathing off of high CO2 levels anymore. Okay? What happens is there's a shift to your peripheral chemoreceptors. The peripheral chemoreceptors operate off of CO2, pH. Both of those for your chronic retainers are not going to be effective because your pH is brought in back into normal range because your bicarb increases. So you have a high CO2, your bicarb comes up and it brings your pH back into normal range. This happens over a long period of time. It's not like this is one day. If it was one day, your central chemoreceptors would go crazy but this is over time your co2 rises your ph goes down your bicarb rises to bring your ph back up and your ph always stays in the normal range so your so your your central chemoreceptors basically go to sleep because your co2 levels way up here your peripheral chemoreceptors again co2 is way up here but the body's happy it's it's been here forever so so we're not responding to that. We're not responding to pH because pH is in a normal range because bicarb has brought the pH and maintained it at the normal level. And so the only drive left to breathe is your peripheral chemoreceptors driving yourself off of a lack of oxygen. That's why these people live with a high CO2 and a low, mild to moderately hypoxemia level okay so when they go from mild to moderately hypoxemia hypoxemic to moderate to severely hypoxemic the peripheral chemoreceptors say you need to breathe more you need to breathe more okay and that's what keeps them breathing at this level at which they breathe they breathe off of a need to bring oxygen in versus most of us who breathe off of the need to get CO2 out, okay? That is the physiology behind what I'm about to say. Now, if you give a COPD or, or a chronic retainer, somebody who breathes off of the need for oxygen, if you give them too much oxygen, then they don't feel the need to breathe. So their body, body basically says, oh, I'm good. I haven't I haven't had this much oxygen in me, in me in a long time and so I don't need to breathe. And so they don't because their PaO2 is now 110 or 120. And so their peripheral chemoreceptors who typically keep them breathing because of the need to bring oxygen in, they basically go to sleep and they say, "We don't need to get we don't need any oxygen, so there's no need to breathe." So they slow their rate down and their tidal volume goes down and their respiratory drive to breathe is slowly diminished, okay? Only when you take them off the oxygen and let their PaO2 fall back to a moderate to mildly hypoxemic range will they start breathing again because now their per peripheral chemoreceptors are going, Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Now we need more oxygen. Okay? Does that make sense? So your COPDers, 
and your chronic retainers, your morbidly obese, your chronic retainers, your chronic restrictive lung diseases, anybody who chronically retains CO2, you'll know this on your blood gas because their CO2 will be high, their bicarb will be high, their pH will be normal in the range of 735 to 739, and they'll be mild to moderately hypoxemic on a baseline gas. And that's where you want to keep those people. Don't try to bring their CO2 back in a normal range. Let them stay there. Keep them mild to moderately hypoxemic, and that will keep their peripheral chemoreceptors saying breathe, breathe, breathe. Hope this helps. If it doesn't, send me a comment. Let me know. I'll clarify it in another video.